Ready, Adam? You're a pregame? Pre-show? Hey, good morning! Good morning! Thank you, God's faithful, uh, frozen, uh, who bear the cold to come to worship. And uh, in a few minutes, we'll be uh, greeting the people uh, that are watching as a warmth of their homes, uh, either on Cambria X or on um, YouTube or Facebook. Uh, one of the, in the back of the church, there by the offering plate are some magnets. If you ever want to go to a living nativity, uh, over at Pierce of St. John's out in the country, they have a living nativity drive through December 1st and 2nd. That's only a month away. Uh, so you can, get, you can get these magnets to help you uh, remember to attend that and pray for that event. It's their fifth anniversary they've been doing this. So I uh, saw some old friends there uh, this week. So uh, you can pick up one of those on the way out. Uh, but at this time, we want to stand and greet one another for worship before we get on the radio.
make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By works of the law, no human being will be justified in God's sight. God is the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Behold, like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand. And he worked it into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to you. As you reshape the church at the time of Luther, reshape us in this generation, Lord, to love you with all our hearts, and to love our neighbors as ourselves, all as a joyful response to your first loving us. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by his grace. God calls us to confess our sins. We observe a moment of silence for personal reflection and confession. God, you formed us in the womb and you shape our lives to love and honor you and our neighbors. Yet we are by nature sinful and separated from you. We sin against you in thoughts, words, and actions. For the sake of Jesus, who was tempted in every way, as we are, and yet without sin, we pray for your forgiveness. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Therefore, by the command of Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. We read responsibly the intro for today. <coughs> I will speak of your testimony before kings, O Lord. And you shall not be put to shame. I will bless the Lord at all times. His grace shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes it boast in the Lord. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord. And shall not be put to shame. We continue as we sing the hymn of praise. Glory be to God the Father.
the church is the place where your gracious gifts find full expression. Let your mercy flow to all who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. St. John chapter 14. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read responsibly the gradual for the season. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God. Walk about Zion, go around her, number her towers. Consider well her ramparts, go through her citadels. That you may tell the next generation. That this is God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been, trans has been manifested apart from the law, Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward, at the, for, forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then, what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By the law of works, no, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for reading the Holy Gospel. We read response to the verse. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fear not, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. We will also read this responsibly. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We answered him, We are offspring of Abraham. Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated for our next hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
prayers from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for proclamation this day is the epistle reading, the first reading for the festival of the Reformation from Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7. I saw another angel. This one was flying across the sky and had the eternal good news to announce to the people of every race, tribe, language, and nation on earth. The angel shouted, Worship and honor God. The time has come for him to judge everyone. Kneel down before the one who created heaven and earth, the oceans, and every stream. This is the word. In the name of Jesus, dear Christian friends, the theme for the message this morning is the eternal gospel. Now, our text is one of the traditional readings for Reformation Day. I can't recall if I've ever preached on Revelation chapter 14. Uh, but like I said before, I read that text again for you from there. And it talks about another angel. Now, the question immediately arises is why is this text included for the readings for Reformation Day? What does this vision of an angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim, what in the world does that have to do with the Lutheran Reformation? Well, believe it or not, beginning already in Luther's lifetime, people identified this angel of the Revelation with the messenger of the Reformation, Martin Luther. They saw Luther as this angel having an eternal gospel to proclaim to every nation, as early as 1522, just five years into the Reformation, a man named Michael Stiefel wrote a poem called On the Christ-Formed, Properly Grounded Teaching of Dr. Martin Luther. In the opening stanza, Stiefel says, John wrote for us of an angel who has set forth God's word with complete clarity. And there Stiefel plays on Luther's name, because the German word he uses for clarity is Lauter. Lauter, Luther. And that was in 1522. In 1546, at Luther's funeral, the preacher Johannes Bugenhagen made a similar comparison. He said, This angel who says, Fear God and give him the honor, was Dr. Martin Luther. And what is written here, Fear God and give him the honor, are the two parts of of Dr. Martin Luther's doctrine, the law and the gospel, through which all the scripture is unlocked in Christ, our righteousness and eternal life is recognized. So from then on, the linkage was established. The angel of Revelation 14 became associated with the person of Martin Luther. And that's how this text came to be a reading for Reformation Day. But were they right? Were Stiefel and Bugenhagen justified in seeing Luther in this vision from Revelation? And how does this apply to us today? And that's what we'll consider now under the theme, an eternal gospel to proclaim. But first, let's see how this text fits into the context in the book of Revelation. With all the fighting going on in Israel right now, Book of Revelation is getting a lot of attention again. Is it somehow a, a fulfillment of those uh, prophecies there? Well, let's talk a little bit more about what the book of Revelation was for. In the chapters leading up to our text, John has described an end time battle in which powerful enemies have been waging war against God's people. The dragon attacks the woman and her child and the rest of her offspring. A beast comes out of the sea. A beast comes out of the earth. They would deceive the world and destroy the saints. And this vision depicts the very real battle that has been going on against the church throughout the entire New Testament era. We've been in a time of tribulation for a very long time, ever since Jesus left. John and the believers back then were feeling it. And they endured the pain of persecution intense and hostility from both the Roman Empire and the Jewish synagogue. Both civil and religious forces were lined up against the early Christians. They were in the midst of battle. And that's what John has been describing 
by means of the vivid images that characterize this book. But then John sees something else. He sees the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him the 144,000, not a literal number. This is a picture of Christ and his church, even as the whole book of Revelation is a picture of what things could be like. The whole lot, the full number, nobody missing. It's a complete number. 12 is a complete number. 12 times 12 to the 100th power, 144,000. And they bear his name on their foreheads, and they're singing the new song. That is, they are singing, saying that the church redeemed by Christ will endure in spite of persecution. And that's really the main theme of the book of Revelation, to give comfort and strength to persecuted Christians so they could endure this persecution knowing, spoiler alert, we're going to win. <laughs> and so they're going to be comforted. They're going to be able to go to heaven someday and get away from all this pain and tribulation. And that's where next John says, I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth. Now John has seen angels before in this book, and now he's seen another. But note this, the Greek word angel can have a kind of a double meaning in Revelation. To be sure, it can refer to the heavenly beings we usually think of as angels, but angel can also simply mean messenger. Any messenger, whether heavenly or earthly, uh, it could be an angel, and, and a pastor is an angel. And sometimes, in spite of the horns sticking out through my hair. But a messenger, giving good news. An earthly messenger with a heavenly message. And the angel that St. John sees flying this vision, while no doubt a heavenly being, has everything to do with the proclamation of the message here on earth. Our text says the angel is flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim. Now where it says directly overhead, there the Greek literally says in mid-heaven. Why mid-heaven? Why not just heaven? Well, to say mid-heaven is to say right smack dab in the middle of the sky, like the sun shining directly overhead. In other words, in the midst of the darkness of this world, when it looks like the light is about to be extinguished and snuffed out, God measures us and reassures us, no, the darkness shall never overcome it. It will last forever. And God means to have it proclaimed. His messengers will preach this gospel to every nation, tribe, language, and people. So what is this eternal gospel, the good news that is being proclaimed? Well, to use the language of Revelation, it's about the lamb who was slain, the one who by his blood ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. It's about him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. It's about Jesus Christ the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings on earth. He, Jesus, our exalted Lord, comes to us and says, Fear not. I am the first and I am the last. And I am the living one. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and Hades. This good news about Jesus is the eternal gospel that's going to be proclaimed. All the Caesars of this world, all the Sanhedrins, the beasts of the sea, the beasts of the earth, all the civil and religious powers, they try to extinguish the gospel. They cannot stop it. And that is the message of this text in Revelation. And it certainly was fulfilled in the case of Luther and the Reformation. And it's not restricted to Luther alone, of course. This text gives encouragement to the church in all ages, but it was fulfilled in a very notable way in the case of Luther. See, Luther was in a battle. He sensed it deeply. He felt the assaults of the devil. He faced fierce opposition. Both civil and religious powers 
lined up against him. Luther was excommunicated by the Pope and declared an outlaw by the emperor. And the reason was precisely because Luther was God's angel, his messenger. And he restored the gospel to its place of prominence, flying directly overhead like the sun shining in mid-heaven. The bright light of this noonday brilliance dispersing the clouds that had shrouded the message in darkness. For Luther, that eternal gospel was too precious a thing for him to compromise or back off. He would rather have been criticized as obstinate than to yield in the pure proclamation of the gospel. What gave him the courage to confess the faith so boldly? Well, it was the gospel itself. Luther knew how much the pure gospel meant to him, freeing his conscience from the burden that had long weighed him down. And so Luther placed this confidence in God as his mighty fortress, as we just sang about. No matter the threats of pope or emperor, and as we heard in the verse, and take they our life, goods, fame, child, and wife, though these all be gone, our victory has been won. The kingdom ours remaineth. Again, spoiler alert, we win. Praise God. The eternal gospel will not be snuffed out, but we continue to proclaim until Christ comes again, either at the end of our lives or at the end of time. And an eternal gospel to proclaim, that was the key. To keep that gospel pure and undefiled so it could be preached for the salvation of every nation. This was the driving force behind the Lutheran insistence on pure doctrine and the sound practice that flows from it. And that's really the story of the Reformation and of Luther in particular. So yes, Stiefel and Bugenhagen were justified in seeing Luther as an angel of Revelation 14, the angel flying directly overhead, having an eternal gospel to proclaim to every nation. Now, what about us? What can we take from this on this Reformation Day 2023? Well, first realize that we are still in battle. The beast of the sea and the beast of the earth are still attacking the saints. The church is facing increased hostility in our society. Religious rights need to be protected from by continuing attacks from politicians and the culture in general. Among the American people as a whole, organized religion is out. Christianity is in disfavor. You guys are in a minority here today, hearing this gospel message. And we need people to hear it. There was a major new survey just released that shows that over the last 10 years, the number of Americans identifying as Christians has decreased from 77% to 65%. In just 10 years, it's dropped 10 to 12%. And in that same time period, just the last 10 years, Americans saying that they have no religious affiliation at all has jumped from 17% to 26%. And the numbers among young adults are even more alarming. Friends, we are in a battle. Will we give in? Will we give up? No! We will continue to confess Christ. For we have an eternal gospel to proclaim. Truth does not change. The message does not change. And people do not change either. All people need what only the gospel delivers. Namely the forgiveness of sins for Christ's sake. Eternal life. The sure hope of salvation. And the Lutheran church above all should set forth this gospel with great courage and great clarity. Like the sun shining in midheaven, like an angel flying directly overhead. So take courage today. That's what the book of Revelation was written for. So you'd have courage in the midst of this battle. God has not abandoned his little flock. Jesus died for you 
and for all people. And that shows how much God is committed to you and his church and to the proclamation of the gospel. Christ rose victorious in the fight and right now our Lord is ruling all things for the good of his church. The angel is still flying directly overhead. The clear light of the gospel is shining brightly even in these gray and latter days. Brothers and sisters, on this Reformation Day, take heart. We have an eternal gospel to give us hope. We have an eternal gospel to give us courage. And we have an eternal gospel to proclaim. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God pass his all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue our worship as we make confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We confess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please remain standing for the prayers of the church. <coughs> Filled with God's grace, founded in faith, and nourished by the word, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and for all people according to their needs. For the church, that we would faithfully use our freedom in the gospel to love and to serve both God and neighbor. Preserve the church from discord and strife. Let the world see that we are yours, O Lord, by our love for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those entrusted to govern our nation, state, and local community, guide them and help them to care justly and mercifully for all the people they serve. For the members of our armed forces, for victims of warfare and violence, and for our enemies. We pray that peace may prevail for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are suffering, those we have named, and those we name silently in our hearts. We pray that their pain and anxiety be relieved according to God's will. For those who mourn the death of loved ones, we pray that God calm their troubled hearts and give them peace to face the days ahead and the confidence that he will never forsake them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who visit this congregation, that they may find here a hospitality that bears witness to the kingdom of heaven. For all who travel, we pray that they arrive safely at their destinations. For all the households of this congregation, grant that they may, they may be havens of peace in places where Christ is proclaimed and lived. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who have asked for our prayers. We continue to ask your blessing upon our missionary, Chelsea Irwin. Be with the Tim Reichs family as he attends seminary in St. Louis. Continue to bless the work of our ministry planning and core teams. Pray for all those who battle COVID. Be with all our shut-ins. We especially, Lord, lift up to you, Sidney Carlson. Be with Brady Eichelberger as he recovers. We thank you, Lord, for the birth of sons, a son to Trinity Mosel and a son to Caitlin Fonseca. 
We thank you, Lord, for being with Peg Skopek and Beth Martinson as they were in the hospital. May you grant them complete healing. Be with all others who battle cancer, including Jolene Lichty, Cody Campbell, Tracy Hedlund, Rachel Colliff, Rick Larson, Carolyn Stirrer, Alan Bentz, Jolene Lichty, Zant, and Tom Sanders, brother of Cindy Mosel. We ask you, Lord, to be near to Kevin Wilson as he has received testing, waiting for confirmation and news of his health. We, Lord, that all things are in your hands, and we ask you, Lord, to bless these you we pray for, that you would hear their needs and assure them of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray for, the, pray for those who have birthdays in our parish. We ask your blessings upon Donna Hevronic, Lene Hilker, Jean Kelly, Pat Coleman, Brent Gilbert, Ryan Johnson, Maverick Zegers, William Grosch, Chloe Kaufman, Mariah Koloff, Sandy Baker, Wendy Fowler, and Adam Martinson. Bless these your servants a special days of celebration. You're blessed to your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Let us pray for this holy assembly that together we use our gospel freedom responsibly. By the Holy Spirit, grant that we all undergo ongoing reformation of our hearts and minds and in proper stewardship of our time, talents, and money, continue to be faithful partners in ministry. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Let us give thanks for those who have gone before us and are with the Lord, especially Martin Luther and all reformers of the church. Sustain us in this earthly journey so that, trusting in the promises of Jesus, we too will know the joy of all those who have died in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, hear these prayers of your faithful people. By your grace, grant us those things you see that we need for the sake of our Redeemer and Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you for your regular and faithful offerings as you came in. You can also drop those off during the week or mail them in as well. A few announcements this morning. We are getting ready for uh, November, which for me is special. As you guys know, I've last several years had no shave November, so I look a little scruffy. Uh, but it's also to bring awareness to uh, prostate cancer. And uh, so I hope, gentlemen, you'll get your PSAs done. I'm going to get mine done this week, too. Uh, so if I look a little different next Sunday, now you know why. Um, announcements, Neil. Okay, Bible class this morning. I'm going to share a short paragraph with you. Driving home from worship on Sunday morning, Susan pondered Pastor Green's sermon. He drew in connection between the gospel reading and their community in, the, in a way that she had not considered before. She asked her family as they were driving home what they thought of the message. Her question was met with an awkward silence. When she pressed further, it seemed that no one else had listened to the sermon. <laughs> Come on, Mom, her son complained. Isn't it enough that we went to church? Hmm. <laughs> Just got so quiet in here. <laughs> Confirmance. You've been taking notes. Ask your parents that question. <laughs> Put them on the spot. <laughs> We're going to talk about that in Bible class this morning. Uh, Jesus says, worship in spirit and in truth. What does that mean? And we'll talk about that. Um, handbells. Uh, first practice is this Wednesday night, starting at 7.30. We practice for about 45 minutes. So 7.30 until about 8.15, okay? Uh, we meet up in the balcony. I still could use at least one more ringer. So come join us. You'll take as many as possible, right? Absolutely. We'll count find the, a spot. Count the four. Handbells are calling to you, all right? Uh, come and join, join them on Wednesday night. Uh, okay, Lenny. Uh, this Thursday evening at 7 o'clock downstairs, we're going to be meeting for the future uh, facilities core team. Uh, it's planning, uh, just looking to see what our future needs are for uh, our building or um, facilities. And it'll, it's under the mission cl uh, clarity uh, guys. And so we will be meeting this Thursday at seven. Anybody who's interested is welcome to come. Thank you. Okay. Hey, thanks Lenny for leading that. Uh, before we get into Jason, he's got a special message for us today. Uh, not as long as a sermon, right? No. No. Okay, good. Uh, but uh, uh, tonight is uh, TriPoint Parish annual meeting at Lynch. Our uh, representatives are 
uh, Paul Seeger, Tammy Meyer, and Bonnie Hines. We thank you uh, them for representing us, but all are welcome to attend, attend that public meeting, 7 o'clock at Christ Lutheran in Lynch. Also, I've got a special Bible study that I've been, uh, I just found from uh, one of my Hebrew classmates, and Emil Neuer. Uh, he is a fourth vice president of our synod, lives in South Dakota. He's a Palestinian Christian. And uh, he's written a Bible study about the, the ongoing struggle since Abraham uh, between Jews and the Arabs. And uh, gives a history of that and, and some more insights in that. If you'd like to learn more, uh, you can see me about Bible study. We went over it uh, Wednesday in the women's Bible study. We'll probably talk about it a little bit more this week on Wednesday. But also men's Bible study this Tuesday. We'll be looking at it. And if you'd like to have a copy of that, let me know. It's very interesting material about and very relevant uh, to what's going on uh, right now in Israel and Gaza. Uh, also, um, I think maybe that's all I have at this time. Okay. Uh, oh, I do have an important notice. Did you guys see what next Sunday is? It's the time change. So what's the number one excuse for not coming to church? I don't have enough time. I'm too tired. So guess what next Sunday is called? No excuse Sunday. You all get an extra hour of sleep, even me. So um, we'll ha we have, remember the time change uh, next week and uh, come appropriately uh, to worship at the right time. Okay, now we're going to hear from our stewardship chair. Uh, Jason, please share with us. Hello. Um, here's a... Uh, oh, I got a uh, reading, I guess. Um, working together, celebrating God's good gifts. Um, for we are co-workers in God's service. We are entering into our annual stewardship emphasis with the theme, Working Together, Celebrating God's Good Gifts. Today and over the next few weeks, we will consider what it means to work together with God as we celebrate God's good gifts to us. Do you ever stop to think that God could have done it all? He could have taken it upon himself to be the sum total of every aspect of reaching people with the gospel and of helping them grow their Christian faith. But for reasons perhaps known fully only to God, he didn't. He chose to utilize people, men, women, and children in his worldwide harvest fields and here at Christ Lutheran Church. That's why the Apostle Paul states so clearly that Although we are God's servants, in reality we are working together with him. We are God's fellow workers. As we are working together, we are celebrating God's good gifts. We certainly have more to celebrate. With the hymn writer we proclaim, summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with us all nature in manifold witness. To your great faithful mercy and love, great is your faithfulness. James 1.17 expresses that truth clearly. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father in the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Think about some of God's good gifts. God gives the seed and rain, health, life, strength, riches, grace, and eternal life. All of these good gifts are tangible demonstrations of God's love and goodness. As we enter into our stewardship emphasis this year, there is a problem with the word stewardship. Mention stewardship to the average person, and the first thing that comes to mind is money. Make no mistake about it, money is a vital element of stewardship that is absolutely necessary for work and ministry of our church to move forward. Total stewardship has been likened to a three-legged stool. Money is one of the legs of the stool. Without that leg, the stool cannot stand. But the other two legs are equally important. Without them, the stool cannot stand. Just what are those other legs? Simply stated, they are time and talent. Total stewardship consists of the three T's, time, talent, and treasure. Remove any one of the three and the stewardship is severely weakened and, the, and undermined in an individual life, in a family and in a church like ours. 
What's really interesting is that there is a basic underlying principle that has to do with time, talent, and treasures. It's found many places in the Bible and has even been mentioned here at Christ Lutheran Church from time to time. It's this God's own, it's this God owns it all. That's right, God owns our time, our talents, and our treasure. According to Psalms, the earth and everything in it is the Lord's. That includes us, our times, our talents, and our treasures. So instead of being owners, we are managers. What's the difference between an owner and a manager? Owners have rights, managers have responsibilities. Owners determine how their resources will be used. Managers carry out the directives and wishes of the owner. In the final analysis, God owns it all and retains all the rights to ownership. Our role is to manage what God has entrusted to us, our time, our talents, and our treasures. Many people love playing Monopoly. They like creating a vast real estate empire out of nothing. They like to concentrate on getting the best properties such as Boardwalk and Park Place. Then they buy some greenhouses and start charging rent. Soon they buy red hotels and charge even more rent. But eventually the game is over. The greenhouses, the red hotels, and all the paper money go back into the box. One day the game of life will be over. All that we worked for and sacrificed for will go back into the box. What counts is what we have done with our time, talents, and treasures that will endure for all eternity. As the tombstone is, an old cemetery reads, what I spent, I had, and what I saved, I lost, and what I gave, I have. Remember, we are co-workers in God's service. Thanks, Jason. Uh, we're going into our stewardship emphasis. Uh, next uh, three weeks, uh, again, we're going to have uh, time for our cards that were dedicated last year. We're going to dedicate new cards on the Sunday before uh, Thanksgiving. And uh, Jason, uh, we'd love to have some more help. Uh, wouldn't you, Jason? Uh, <laughs> he, he is the chairman of our stewardship committee. It's supposed to be three other people on there. Uh, and they need, there isn't three other people. Uh, so if you have been blessed... Yeah, that's a rhetorical question. Uh, you have. And if you'd like to serve and uh, work with our congregation, work with Jason, uh, Paul Sigur, our chairman, also works on that committee uh, to, again, uh, help our congregation grow in our faith. Uh, that helps uh, with our time, talent, and treasure. And we look forward to hearing uh, more presentations in the next few weeks and having our commitment Sunday on November 19th, uh, just three weeks away. I believe that's all the announcements. As the offerings are brought forward then, I invite you to stand as we sing Salvation as unto us has come, verses 1 and 9. sacrament begin with the preface. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. It is truly good, right, and salutary. We should all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord 
who gave his life on the cross in order that our hearts may be reshaped to reflect not our own goodness, but God's. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. And sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate all the faithful, the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, same night as betrayed, took bread, and when given thanks, he broke it and gave to his disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. The same we also took the cup after supper, and when he given thanks, he gave it to him, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, and give us your holy body and blood, body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension to heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
stands, we've seen the post be mechanical. By Christ's body and blood in this sacrament, you shape us to be the body of Christ. Send us out from this table forgiven and restored, that we may freely bear the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We re read responsibly the benediction. God has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness. By grace you have been saved through faith. Amen. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has given to us in Christ. You are blessed. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn, The Church is One Family. <laughs>